This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Enlargement of the European Union is high on the agenda, as is potential EU reform. Within that context, a new Franco-German report has made a series of recommendations, including turning the continent into a four-tier, so-called multi-speed Europe, with decreasing levels of integration the further out you go. So in this video, we'll explore this concept, look at the other recommendations, and explain the renewed focus on reform and enlargement. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. To get things started, it's worth just quickly explaining exactly what this new report is, because there's been a bit of confusion in the media here. The report isn't actually official French or German government policy, but it was commissioned by the two governments back in January, when they assigned a team of experts, dubbed the Group of Twelve, to look at what kind of reforms the EU will need to facilitate future enlargement. Which means there's a good chance that the report will at least inform Franco-German thinking on the issue going forward. For context, enlargement is a hot topic in the European Union at the moment, largely because the EU has promised accession to Ukraine sometime soon. Integrating Ukraine alone will be a massive task, but it's also brought renewed attention to other candidate countries, including the Western Balkans, who've been waiting to join the EU for years. The French and German governments have realised that if the EU wants to bring in all these new countries, and possibly even more, it'll have to reform in some way, because it's been unable to accept new countries for a decade now, and it's currently struggling to deal with its more unruly members, like Hungary and Poland. Anyway, let's get into the report itself. The big headline-grabbing recommendation in the report is about what we might describe as a multi-speed Europe with four distinct tiers, each with different obligations, rights, and levels of integration. These tiers would effectively be four concentric circles spreading out from an inner core. That inner core, or inner circle, would comprise the deeply integrated EU states, for example those who have adopted the euro as their currency, and those who are part of the Schengen area. The next layer out would be the EU itself, meaning all current member states and any that join in the future. The report says that as EU members, the countries in this tier are bound by the same political objectives, required to comply with Article 2 of the Treaty on the European Union, and they benefit from the cohesion fund and redistributive policies. The third circle would be the first two outer tiers comprising non-EU members. Specifically, Circle 3 would include associate members, for example countries in the European Economic Area like Norway, Switzerland and Iceland, that are not EU members but do participate in things like the single market and comply with the EU's principles and values, such as democracy and the rule of law. Finally, you've got the outer circle, which would be something akin to the newly formed European Political Community, or EPC. This outer circle, the report says, would not include any form of integration with binding EU law and would not allow access to the single market. Rather, it would focus on geopolitical convergence and political cooperation in policy areas of mutual importance and relevance. For example, energy security, climate and more. The EPC is currently just an intergovernmental forum for discussions on cooperation, so the report suggests that to act as the outer circle of the new multi-speed Europe, the EPC should evolve from its current loose form into an arrangement with stronger institutional ties that could enable the European Commission to play a greater coordinating role and the EU budget to mobilise some funding. According to the report, the two outer circles would be intended either as a sort of permanent status for those countries satisfied with limited integration, or as a stepping stone towards EU membership. The report even suggests that non-European countries could be involved in the outer circle, including, for instance, democratic countries in North Africa. This idea may well solve the issue of different countries wanting different things, however it could be seen as weakening the EU's fundamental project, that of ever closer union. Additionally, the outer tiers may be seen by candidate countries and peripheral members not as a way to let them into the EU, but keep them out of the so-called inner circle. 
Aside from the multi-speed vision for Europe, the Franco-German report also makes a number of recommendations for reform of the EU's processes ahead of any enlargement. One of the main ones relates to the European Council, which is made up of the leaders of each member state. The report recommends shifting all remaining decisions in the European Council from unanimity to qualified majority voting in order to improve the Council's decision-making ability and to end the ability of a single country's government to veto key decisions, as Hungary has done in relation to some decisions on Ukraine. A full shift to qualified majority voting would prove very unpopular among a number of member states. So, to make it more palatable, the report proposes a number of other changes to the system, including rebalancing the majority vote threshold from 55% of countries representing 65% of the EU population to 60% of countries representing 60% of the EU population, introducing a so-called sovereignty safeguard for when vital national interests are at stake, and a establishing a joint chamber for dialogue between national courts and European courts. Other recommendations include capping the size of the European Parliament at 751, increasing the Union's budget and strengthening powers to enforce the rule of law. It also suggests that if certain member states do not want to go ahead with changing the EU's treaties, then a coalition of the willing could push ahead with reforms. Overall, the report reflects something that is widely agreed upon within the European Union, that it needs to reform itself. However, exactly how and when the Union should reform itself is really up for debate, and this report puts forward just some of the ideas that are being floated. France and Germany are leading the call for reform before admitting any new members, while other proposals, for example from a recent report by experts from Baltic and Nordic countries plus Poland and Croatia, suggest that the admission of new members should not be conditional on EU reform. Members that are more enthusiastic about enlargement fear that all the talk of significant reform before enlargement will effectively be used to hold up enlargement. This is despite the fact that the report suggests that the EU should commit itself to being ready to enlarge by 2030. The French and German governments, meanwhile, have not been publicly supportive of that timeline. As for the recommendations themselves, they are not particularly new or revolutionary, but have been presented within a new political context where reform and enlargement is high on the agenda. The next key moment will be an informal meeting in Granada, Spain in early October, where EU leaders will consider the way forward. Weeks later, the European Commission will publish its annual enlargement report of progress. Then, in December, a key decision will be made of whether or not to officially open negotiations with Moldova and Ukraine. Things are expected to change with a story like this, so make sure you stay on top of updates. That way you know what's going on, and let's be honest, it always feels great to stay on top of things. Even within TLDR, a few of us have been brushing up our InDesign skills in order to create the newspaper we're currently working on. It turns out that making a professional-looking newspaper is pretty difficult, so we headed to Skillshare to take their course on the topic. Unlike when I tried to learn InDesign for another never-released project a few years ago, this time I was guided through the process quickly and effectively, and this time the project will actually see the light of day thanks to Skillshare's incredibly easy-to-follow guides. It's not just that either, you likely already knew Skillshare for classes on things like photography, editing and illustration, but Skillshare also has hundreds of career-focused classes too. We all know at this stage that traditional jobs aren't one size fits all. I mean, I finished university and came straight into a job at a YouTube channel. That's not necessarily the path that you want to take, but the courses on Skillshare can help you design a career to fit you. There's courses on everything from how to start a business to maximizing your workflow or how to grow in e-commerce. Another course that Jack's actually taking to help with the newspaper project. And if you use our link, you can get access to all of that for free. That's right, the first 1,000 people to use the link will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare.